Oh, God! There we go. Ah. Don't worry, it's OK. Let go of me. Let go. We're back on shift inside the ambulance. Whoa, got a job. If you need me to get in the back, you might have to stop. With more medical emergencies. I'm OK. Oh, that's a good one. And more cameras. What's that up there? That, Tyler, is a little camera. We're taking you back to the heart of the action. Just lie down for me. We're from the ambulance, OK? No, I'm sorry. Ah! There are some new faces. I'm happy to be your crewmate. I feel like we've bonded. <laughs> and some old friends. I'm better driving than you. Is it the fact that I'm faster and smoother than you? Your driving's terrible. How can I help? <laughs> Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Nice deep breaths. Come on, open up. Smash in. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. We'll get you right. Right. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews from West Midlands Ambulance Service. I don't need to be a doctor. I just need to know what I can do to help. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. We see so many people. You get told that nasty C word. There's so many people can fight it now. Step inside the ambulance. You take care, you, mate. You. All right, mate. Thank you. thought about it when you get these newer trucks it sounds like a, it's a chain size <laughs> the sound of the police so you just love the reverberating noise of this uh, I love it it's this one I can't stand really <laughs> try and buy him, ain't it? Do you always think the second tone sounds like uh, a techno remix of feel like just a techno song? The, the disco's nights out. Oh, mate, I have no idea what music you're listening to, but it's certainly <laughs> not the same kind of techno that I listen to. Come on, lie, million. It's coming up to 5.30 in the evening and another job has come through for paramedic Michael Anslow and student paramedic Dimitri Holloway. Uh, category 3, 70-year-old male who's fallen. Patient is on the floor with a walking stick. Call estates patient shuffling along the floor. States he's had an operation and has no toes. Has no toes. Interesting. Michael and Dimitri only have a rough location for the man. They also know he's white, with grey hair and black clothes. Let's have a little walk, Michael. Arriving at the address, they head off to look for him. I'll have a look down there. You'll have a look down there. Might meet in the middle. Hello? Have you seen anybody on the floor? No. Found him. Have you? Down there. Where? Just down here Where's on the left. Go and grab the kit, then. Yeah. While Dimitri goes to bring the ambulance closer, Michael says hello. Hi there, what's your name? Sorry? You got no toes. What's your name, sorry? My name's Graham. Yours is Graham? Yes. What's happened today then, Graham? I've got no toes and that thing is cold. OK, but what's made you go onto the floor? Nice. Can I feel your wrist a sec? So have you fallen? I might have fallen, I don't know. You're not quite sure what's happened? Mm -hmm. Have you been discharged from the hospital mm. recently? When was that? Yesterday. Just yesterday. What were you in for? His feet. Your feet, was it? OK. Do you suffer with diabetes? No, I said they were gangrenous. Oh, they were gangrenous. OK. Right. Gangrenous feet aren't something Michael has come across before. Graham is not in a good way, and it soon becomes clear why. Where do you live? I don't. You don't have an address? No, I live in the park. In the park? Graham is homeless. His poor living conditions have led to the serious infection in his feet, which has meant he's had to have an operation to remove his toes. Since his fall this morning, 
He's been on the ground for over an hour. Do you feel dizzy or anything? No. And no pain anywhere other no. than your toes? No, I need to go. OK. Have you had all of them off? Yeah. On, on your left foot? All ten. Oh, all ten. Yeah. So both feet. Yeah. Right, it's OK. How did you fall? He's not quite sure. Over. You're not sure? No, I did trip over on these cabs. Right. So you've tripped then? Yeah. You told me you weren't sure. I ain't bothered what I told you. I told you I fell over. All right. What do you want me to say? Oh, we, oh, it's the there. reason why we ask Graham is so we can work out what's going on medically, if there's anything more than just a simple trip or if there was something more going on. more than a trip, trip, I'd be dead. Right. Where have you come from? Have you come from the park to here? Mm. or So where were you going? I've come from our hospital. I've been in there and I've come out. Oh, so you've come out today? Yeah. OK. So you've made it from... I don't know what all the other was... Unfortunately, uh, in our role, we do meet a lot of abusive patients. And Graham was a, a difficult character to, to assess and, and to manage and swearing quite a lot uh, vocally at us. I could understand his frustrations, but at the same time, there was no excuse for some of his language and, and aggression towards us, really. There's no need to swear at all. Really, it's about using communication skills to try and win the patient over to explain that we're, we're only there to help. Michael wants to get Graham to the ambulance to check him over properly. But to get him up and about, they're going to need to use special equipment. We're going to get a cushion that goes under your bum and it inflates and then lifts you up off the floor, OK? Um, right, do you think you could lift the weight off your bum enough or shuffle on to here? That's it, well done. The inflatable cushion will raise Graham enough to get him to his feet. Graham insists he's then well enough to walk. Do you think you're going to be able to get to the ambulance? Yeah, I can get to the ambulance from here. If we give you a hand, yeah? I can walk you. You sure? Yeah. You're not going to fall on us? Bit wobbly, Graham. Yeah, should we opt for a stretcher, do you think, Graham? Let's have a sit on Graham's there. clearly not up to walking, oh, God, but with no home to go it. to and nobody to look after him, he's a tricky case for Michael and Dimitri. No. So you say you've got no no family at all? I've got nobody. You're on your own. Nice. Any close friends or anything like that? I've got nobody at all. No nobody, one. absolutely nobody. All right, Graham. Our problem is that because you, you don't have a fixed address and you're very unsteady on your feet, wouldn't really be safe for us to leave you here. Well, something needs to get put in place for you because you can't live in a park. Despite having been discharged only yesterday, Michael's got no choice but to take Graham back to hospital. As well as the usual observations, Michael needs to inspect Graham's feet. Are your feet, have they got dressings on, I take it, or...? Yeah. Can we have a look at them, or...? Yeah. Can we leave your socks off yeah. so they don't get infected? That's it. They've done a neat job. Can you still feel sort of here yeah. and here? Yeah. Good. I do feel sorry for Graham. It's not a life that I would wish for anybody. I did feel quite sorry for him that he's found himself in this position. I think deep down, I think he was still possibly a bit lonely uh, and would benefit certainly from some social interaction. And I just hope that he will accept the help that's offered to him so he can move forward and have a better quality of life. With the checks done, it's time to get Graham back to hospital where Michael would like to get him some extra help and support. Well, we'll express our concerns for you, Graham. As they head to the hospital, Michael finds out more about Graham's life. Are you single? Yeah. Yeah. I will be till the day, Is that because you're not interested or just...? It's because I have I don't know what you do now, interesting me. I'll tell you how well, you never know. You might find someone. You never know what life holds. 
But you can't inevitably stay in the park. I mean... I don't care, but if they don't want to let me down the park, let them give me a Kevin out. That's what I'm trying to, to say to you, Graham, to try and... I'm on your side here. You don't need to shout. How long have you been homeless for? That's two to three years. When was the last time that you had, like, a, a home, though? It was about six or seven years ago. Were you there on your own? No, I was with my missus. And then have you split up and then... Yeah. Yeah. And I've been all over the place. Right. But I want another missus. Too much trouble. Yeah. Mm. Moments later, they arrive at the hospital. If I pop your, your shoes and stuff in a bag and your socks, yeah? Graham will be taken for assessment on his walking and hopefully found some extra welfare support. I feel sorry for him. I know, like, he's obviously got nowhere to live. He can't stand and walk independently. Unfortunately, um, it's more of a, a social issue... Yeah. ..for the patient, which, unfortunately, we can't do much about. I just wish we could do more for some people, but, unfortunately, that's not the way the system works. an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Paul, I mean, it's very useful for when you go to the long-term debt. So I've worn a piece of Yeah. Wet them. Snap. So you lick the apollo mint, snap it in half, put half up each nostril, and then put a couple in your mouth. Simon Little and Michelle McNulty have just started their shift together. But Michelle has an emergency of her own to sort out. Her six-year-old daughter, Orla, has a cracked tooth, and the school have phoned saying she's in agony. Hi, I'm just wondering if you've got any emergency appointments tomorrow, please, from a six-year-old daughter. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. What's wrong with Orla's tooth? Well, it's, um, for quite some time, it's had, like, a break. It's one of her back teeth. It's all kind of breaking apart now. Yeah. The ambulance service let Michelle go to the school to check all is OK and to give her pain relief. Hello. All right. Is this some serious cowpop? Yeah. yeah. Many well, it's to stop you uh, wanting to come out of school, isn't it? Thank you. Right then. You OK? Yeah? Let's have a look at your mouth, then. Oh, yeah, it has broken a lot more now. Let's have a Show Simon. Oh, dear. Oh, definitely, it's properly so, come apart. Yeah. It looks like it's going to come out, even. Is that wobbly? Uh-huh. Oh, he might take it out, you know. How much? How much money do you think you'll get for that? <laughs> I don't know. It's breaking off in pieces. She's probably getting a quid at a time, you, you know. know. what you're going to do? You're gonna, when, if it comes out, give it a good Open scrub. Your mouth, then, let me it see. It has to be nice and white. Looks like it's just going like that, like a flower, and just breaking. Did you manage to eat some lunch? Yeah. Yeah? Did it hurt? Jacket potato. So it was soft. Jacket potato. Yeah, I'll see you later, then. I love you. Goodbye. Says thank you. With the call in at the school done in just five minutes, they're now ready for a job. Sorted. Six one nine seven, go ahead. Nine seven, thank you so much for that. That's really much appreciated. We're now clear. Oh, lovely. Just in time for a job. Thank you, somebody. Oh, new assignment. Oh no, no. What? Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. 
They've been told their next patient has cut his leg open at a horse yard. Simon's terrified of horses. He's going to have to leave his fears at the stable door. What are you going to do if there's, a, if there's a horse right over your head? Not getting out. Not yet. Push the horse away. <laughs> oh. As they approach, they realise the company address is that of a horse box manufacturer. OK, they might just be making horse boxes. I feel they're a bit yeah. more comfortable now. There's no horses here. You, you don't think they need a horse to check the sizes or anything? Oh. Possibly. They arrive at the yard. Luckily for Simon, there don't seem to be any horses in sight. There he is. There he is. We found him. One. Hold on a second. 40-year-old roofing supplier Steve has slashed his leg open on sheet metal. Is it him on the floor? Hello. Yeah. What happened? Uh, oh, just uh, walk past them steel sheets and just sleep down so it's like a razor blade. All oh, right, OK. Bit of blood Is this on the all floor. The blood that's lost. Yeah. And obviously you're soaked yeah. in your Your trainer. Yeah. yeah. You need a new trainer. Steve has a painful-looking deep oh. gouge in his leg. Oh, that's a good one. You've done well there. That's a good one. Let me just clean sort. it. All right. You're all right with blood, I assume. Yeah, You're yeah. not going to, like, pass out nah. or anything on us. As Steve's got an open wound, he's now at high risk of an infection. For Simon and Michelle, it's unusual to see such a nasty slice cut. You've, you've done well there. That is a good one. We don't go too many good ones, do we? Right on the tip of your tattoo there. Don't worry about that. It's only a walls one, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you've got anything in it. It's just a clean cut off the, yeah. off the sheet. It's good, it'll cut that that bit as well there. Stitch that up perfect. Huh? Can, they'll be able to stitch that oh, up. Will you need stitches? Yeah, stitches. yeah. Steve's incredibly calm despite what's happened and doesn't realise how serious the cut is. Oh, look, he's even got you the stretcher. Oh, war bait. No, you won't. Oh, well. No, because you've been bleeding. If you start It'll walking just now... It'll just spurt everywhere really? as soon as you put pressure on it, yeah. If you Close pinch it, it pinch it together... This might hurt a bit, I'm sorry. Uh, look. OK, I got it. As well as cleaning the wound, Michelle and Simon need to dress it to make sure it doesn't become infected and cause further pain. Sorry if I'm pressing a bit no, hard sorry. on you, mate. I feel like you need any pain relief, any paracetamol or anything. Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Just the shock of it all, more than anything, isn't it? Yeah. You didn't even feel it. I well, didn't feel it. I seen blood demo that sharp. With Steve bandaged up, they now need to get him inside the ambulance. Pop this one off. Right, keep coming up, keep coming up. Yeah. You're up to date with all your tetanus and that? Yeah. <laughs> so how are you feeling? All right? Yeah, so. So is this your business then? Yeah. Okay. All aboard. See you on the other side. See you on the other side. As Steve needs to go to hospital, he hands over the reins to his staff for the afternoon. Thank you for the stitches out. Yeah. Nothing with red stitches. Really? Might be a few as well, it's quite a lengthy uh, cut, isn't it? Welcome to Steve, that will No, no, but they might just numb it a bit. Seventeen minutes later, they arrive at hospital. But Steve is adamant this won't disrupt his caravanning weekend at the seaside. Didn't have any holidays booked, did you, this week? No. Well, no. I'm going I'm good, I'm good down to the van the weekend. It yeah, will be fine. Have a little paddle in the sea. The salt water would be good for your leg. Attract all them sharks with, all, yeah. with the blood. <laughs> no, are there really sharks? Oh, you could tell the kids that you're not going to go in. Oh, no, no, I know there are sharks in the world. I mean, are there any sharks down like Western? Steve's cut will now be sewn up by the medical team in hospital. It was a good cut, wasn't it? I like that. It's a juicy cut. Juicy. Oh, that's a good, juicy. You can have a little scar there, innit? 
cold. Thanks to Mr. Cool. Too. To be fair, because it's very clean, it'll probably be a really neat scar as well, yeah. and it'll probably fade quite well. Yeah. Just goes to show how dangerous it can be going just near sheet metal. Well, it's wearing shorts to work, isn't it? That's why we don't wear shorts to work. I'm starving. You know, it's been ages since I've had a banana butty. It's disgusting. Yeah. That was disgusting. Have you never had one? No. Fruit and bread? Oh, I'm just going to have myself an apple sandwich. <laughs> it doesn't work with the uh, apple. You sicken me. You sicken me. It's tea time in Dudley. Regular crewmates Giverny Gallagher and Patrick Barnes are stuck in traffic when they get another call out. It's uh, abdominal flank pain. In the notes it says patient has an infected gallbladder. Gallbladder problems can cause excruciating pain. Yeah. I've heard apparently it's worse than labour pain. Really? According to my friend who's had a baby and... According to every female I've talked to, nothing is worse than labour pain. Well, nothing a man can experience, yeah, I'll obviously. See. I'll see. Difficulty in breathing and have no pain. Associated vomiting, very severe pain, writhing in pain. Their patient is a 58-year-old woman. It's her third attack of the week and the pain is out of control. What's happened then, Sylvia? Right, You've got gallstones, yep. Blood have infected. Right, that had been diagnosed at the hospital, has it? Yeah, uh, I had an MRI scan. Okay. Sylvia was diagnosed with gallstones four months ago and has been suffering from ongoing stomach pains and nausea ever since. I keep having these pains. This is the worst I've had it. But, but it's definitely your gallstones, it's, it's exactly the same yeah, as what you've had before. The it's definitely. Okay. okay. This is her third attack this week, and today's is so bad, her husband Steve and sister Yvonne called for an ambulance. I keep having these attacks, but I've had this one since Friday. OK. And also, it's got leukaemia. Oh, well, OK. I'm on, the, I'm on the border. I just had to have my blood test every six months. OK. I'm on the border. Yeah. I had breast cancer 14 years ago. OK. Are you passing any blood in your urine at all? Nothing there. Okay. No, I'm just usually when I have these bad attacks after I've been sick, I usually ease up after mm. the flowers. Yeah. The pain ease up a bit. It hasn't changed okay. today. Well, have you been? How many times have you been sick today? Oh. Quite a lot. So the main problem we've got to deal with really is the pain, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Okay. What's the best thing to do for us, Sylvia, I think, is to get you on the back of the vehicle, is that all right? And then we can sort you out with some pain relief, make you feel a bit more comfortable. Okay. Do you want to hold on to me or are you all right? You okay? It was terrible yesterday, like this. Was she? Okay. Yeah, but it usually goes away. You have to. After a bit. But it hasn't today. What time did it start, roughly? Today. Today, yeah. The gallbladder. If, if it gets blocked, it can rupture, it can cause all sorts of problems. I've had a friend die from cholecystitis. So the pain is an indicator that something's severely wrong. Um, so it's as much of a pain relief getting to the hospital as well as for investigations and to find out what is wrong and to do something about it. Take your time. OK, it might make you feel a bit drunk. You hold on to it. With Sylvia in the back of the ambulance, Patrick and Giverny hope some gas and air will help relax her. But it means we can get everything else in place. On a scale of one to ten, Sylvia, where bad's the pain? Hold on, I have to ask. Over ten this time. Over ten? Yeah. Right. Okay. I usually be up to sleep. Right. And prior to today, when did you have a, a, a period of this pain? You could say every... I have the tax to say twice a week. But today is much worse. Yeah, much I just couldn't long. stand the pain no longer. Despite the gas and air, Sylvia is still in pain. They decide she needs stronger pain relief, so prepare some morphine, the strongest painkiller they carry. Have you had children? Would you say this is worth in childbirth or not? 
Right. Do we to hold it or you're right? Right. Yeah. Sharp scratch. Is it painful when you press it? Well, it's just pain. Just pain. It's just it's on my belly button really. Okay. It's about here, yeah, it's about here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sylvia couldn't be controlled on, on scene. Her, her pain was too severe. We had to get into hospital because the morphine doesn't last forever. You know, the pain would have returned once that had worn off. So getting into hospital was the best treatment plan for her at that time to, to keep her comfortable. You should have called me earlier. What could you have done? Yeah, yeah but I told you soon, it's no good just suffering the pain like that. Because that's how mine was. Usually after I'm sick, it usually is off after an hour. Sylvia. You know, she'd had quite a complex medical history and she seemed like such a resilient person. And I think to have to fight through all of those, you know, bouts of chemotherapy that she's been through and to, to fight against the leukaemia and the cancer um, and to come out strong on the other side and then to have these gallstones, I think, you know, she's been through a hell of a lot, but she's still, still sort of doing her best. OK. For the four-mile journey, they try and keep Sylvia as relaxed as they can. Yeah, carry on, yeah. Just take as much or as little as you want, you know. When they arrive nine minutes later, Sylvia is handed over to the doctors in A&E, who will try to manage her acute pain and deal with her ongoing gallbladder problems. It's just gone 2 p.m. Oh, an ambulance sandwich. It's very weird to travel in convoy. Yeah. Paramedic Michael Anslow and student paramedic Dimitri Holloway are nearly nine hours into a 12 hour shift. I think the public probably think there's like a major incident going on, don't they? Probably, yeah. It'd be funny if they turn up to the same job, though, wouldn't it? You had that before where you turn up yeah. and there's just some of the crew in the tent and you're like, yeah. hello, it's me. Thought you were going to sing Adele then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I won't be breaking out my singing voice, unfortunately. The mum of a toddler has dialed 999 because her child has been ill since last night. We're going to Michael. A two year old. Oh. He's ill uh, with a fever and vomiting. But they're not the first crew at the scene. See something green, fluorescent, ambulance colour. As it's a Category 1 call, another paramedic is already there. Hi, you. Hello. All right. Yeah. Paramedic Stephen Cooper is working alone. His vehicle can't carry patients, but the toddler needs hospital treatment, so it's up to Michael and Dimitri to take right. over. That's, no, that's fine, mate. We're here for this, this young lad. OK. He's, um, he's two and a half. Um, since, I think it was about seven o'clock last night, he was in bed. Mum noticed he had a sharp rise in his temperature. OK. Mum, poor one, is extremely worried. She's been looking after Fateh with her auntie okay. Manjeet, who lives close by. I think he's either had a febrile or some type of convulsion. Okay. Or it's just the rigors, I'm not sure. OK. He's quite lethargic and floppy. Mm -hmm. Temp 39.8. OK. Stephen thinks Fate's high temperature has caused him to have a febrile convulsion. But his heart is also beating too quickly okay. and his breathing is rapid. Okay. Combined, okay. these are all very worrying symptoms. Has his nappies and stuff been OK? Yeah. They've been wet regularly? Yeah. Yeah. It's quite smelly. Yeah. OK. The assessment of fatter was, was difficult because uh, there was a language barrier. It was quite difficult for me to communicate with mum and also vice versa for mum to tell me about her concerns because of the, the language barrier that was there. 
And what language do you speak? Uh, uh, mostly Punjabi. Punjabi, okay. I don't speak Punjabi, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, could we take him to the ambulance if you come with us? So you're there, yeah? Michael's keeping things calm so he doesn't panic the family. But he's noticed Fateh showing signs of sepsis, a life-threatening blood infection. You OK, Michael? Yeah. Um, he's read on the sepsis tool. His respirate's um, 52, so it's classed as severe tachypnea. Um, when someone mentions that someone's taking red on the sepsis scale, it means that they're what we class as big sick, so we really have to step up our game. We need him, um, his bum on here. Sepsis is a life-threatening emergency, and if not treated, can cause uh, organ failure and ultimately death if not treated at all. Don't, don't worry, it's OK. It's really important that we get the patient to a hospital and to definitive care as soon as we possibly can. Have I got my cool torch? Look, what's this? It's my cool torch. <laughs> Even my cool torch is not doing the trick today, Michael. The crew need to get Fat A to hospital for treatment as quickly as possible. I just check uh, temperature. If, if Fat A does have sepsis, he could deteriorate very quickly. Michael needs to monitor him throughout the journey. Michael, shout me when you're ready. Um, good to just start treadling. The hospital is just under three miles away. You OK? Yeah. But at this point, every second counts. You all right? You like the blue lights? <laughs> We've called in the hospital okay. um, just to let them know that we're coming. Okay. okay. Um, has he had a seizure? Yeah. He has? Yeah. Uh, a seizure? With a condition as serious as sepsis, it's critical that they get an accurate diagnosis. The ambulance crew have access to translators for over 100 languages. Hiya, uh, could I have a, a Punjabi translator, English to Punjabi, please? Do you want to step off for me first, or...? Okay, do you want me to carry you? Or yeah, you... OK. You, you sure? Yeah. OK. If I carry your bag. Lovely. The paediatric team are standing by to assess Fate. If he does have sepsis, he'll need urgent emergency care. Ten, ten and four fours are my normal shifts. Oh, dear. And, and you want a permanent crew, mate? No, and I want one. You don't want one? I want one. Yeah, I'm sorry. I want, I want to have a permanent crew, mate, that I can pop a paddy with, you know? I might ask. Oh, God. I might ask. I'm happy to be your crew, mate, if needs. Yeah? But if we can, I don't, I don't know if it works. I feel like we've bonded. <laughs> <laughs> It's just gone midday, and Laura Hickman and Nicole McClintock are deep into their shift when a call comes through. This job is to uh, a doctor's surgery um, for a query stroke. A man has been taken to his local GP by his friend, who's worried that he might have suffered a stroke the previous day. The GP thinks he should have specialist attention as soon as possible. Just three minutes later, Nicole and Laura arrive at the surgery. Hello. Where they find the patient, Sydney, and his friend, Miriam. So, how are you feeling? I'm 
fine. The mum did myself. My failure rests, sweetheart. First up, Nicole needs to check for obvious signs of a stroke. Any headaches or anything, sweetheart? No. Okay. Can we send this stick over? Mm. Okay. So you take my hand. Oh, you're cold. Yeah, oh, no. Give me a squeeze. Oh, it's cold. And push me away. And pull me in towards you. Okay. And hold your arms out in front. I'm going to let go and you keep your arms there, okay? Touch your nose with this finger. And this one. All right. Sydney's got no immediate stroke symptoms. And puff your cheeks out. But he says he woke up at 3 a.m. the previous night needing the loo and found himself unable to move. It's that a dead weight, OK, so when, when you couldn't move, what what part of your body couldn't move? Just, just, just one side. Weakness on one side of the body is a classic sign of a stroke. And I would still feel the strains of the day. Sydney might have had one okay. without realising. So, what's your medical history? Any history of any strokes? Uh, mini strokes? No, I suppose about three or four heart attacks. Oh my days! Oh, is that all? Well, just three or four heart attacks. <laughs> no bother. Too well. I've been with you. Any blood pressure problems? No, they just checked blood pressure, just smack on, 120, 60. Okay. Blimey, better than mine, that was. But Sydney so does have to other to medical to problems, including angina, heart and kidney diseases, and prostate issues. Nicole and Laura learn his blossoming friendship with Miriam has helped him to cope. You see, I've known him only seven years. Right. Because I met him at dancing at... Oh! He's fine. When we were away from each other, we ring each other at night in the morning to make sure we're alive. Aww. Oh, bless you. Bless. Aww. When you're 93. You're 93? No. Oh, you're 93? You wouldn't think it. I still don't believe the both of you, to be honest. I'm 83. <laughs> you're 83? 93. Oh, my goodness. Well, you look better you. than me, I'm 28. <laughs> <laughs> It may be all smiles, but there's a serious side. Yeah. The GP says because of what's happened, the stroke team at the hospital wants Sydney brought into A&E as soon as possible. Now, if you pop your bum as close up to that bend as you can get it. And while it's Sydney that needs medical attention, it turns out Miriam has problems of her own. You pop your bum on here, sweetheart. Pick up a lot. I don't like it, but I can't help it. What's up with me? You've got a very active diaphragm from the sounds of it. We don't go heat up, we don't belch. Oh, is it belch? Belch. All the time. Oh, she burps a lot, does she? A lot, and it gets cross, she goes, and then I have to, at the other end, my bum, that lets <laughs> rip, <laughs> and it goes. If you need to fart, you need to fart. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, a bit of decorum. <laughs> Just at your temperature, Sydney, all right? Oh. I get to bed. Amongst the hilarity, Laura and Nicole still need to stay focused on Sydney's health. Sydney, can I just pinch a bit of blood out your finger? Is that all right? I'll give it you back, I promise. Sharp scratch, OK. Can't tell me why you're Can't tell you why you're You're just a very gassy person, then, really, aren't you? It's all that sherry you drink on a night time, that's what does it. I don't get embarrassed. Oh, bless you. Oh, no. A lady was putting some glasses out in the departmental store. Yeah. And I went over, and as I bent over, right over her head, it went. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said, somebody just squashed a frog in your floor. <laughs> or who let the ducks in? Oh, dearie me. It's going to be a good day today, Nicole. Yep. I can feel it in me waters. <laughs> no, feel it in your bones. Feel it in me bones. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it. <laughs> just chuck it to yourself on that one, OK? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, if it's anything like you, my darling, I could feel it in me bottom, couldn't I? <laughs> Have a bit of decorum, if you mind. Oh, sorry, derriere. <laughs> With Sydney and Miriam safely strapped in, it's time for Laura to get them off to hospital. 
you ready, Nate? Three seconds, I'm just getting my belt on. My driving's not that bad. Well, our belt is up, Ken. That's all right, then. Mind the rabbits in the road. <laughs> Nicole takes the chance to check on Sydney. Have you been eating and drinking normally? Yes. We eat all for his greed. Yes, normally. <laughs> Toilet and OK? Yes. Only because every night he drinks that ruddy black stuff. Pringes? Lean crystal. Oh, it's not. I thought you were meaning Pringes. What a them? Hmm? Pringes? Prin? You know a Prin. A print that you eat. Oh, you're not talking right. <laughs> it's a prune where I live. <laughs> prune. <laughs> Are you Scottish? Oh. <laughs> Irish. From Northern Ireland. Yeah. Why do we get confused with Scottish? Just then, they arrive at the hospital and it's time to break up the party. Very good. <laughs> oh, I hope you're all right, Sid. But if you're going to die, I wish you'd die here. Stop having me on. <laughs> Let's get this stuff off. We're going to take you in on this bed, OK? We are indeed. Sweetheart, can I get you to pop off for me first so that we aren't running you over? Don't fall on top of me. We'll have a nice bed to You would, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd have a nice It's a soft mattress. <laughs> there we go. Keep you your hands. You hold that for me. Okay. Sydney will be taken off for assessment by stroke specialists, and Miriam will go with him. Graham, who fell over and couldn't get up, was taken to A and E. Michael and Dimitri also put a call in to social services to try to get him some support. Michael says he's now heard Graham is in assisted living housing. After slicing his leg on a sheet of metal at work, Steve needed stitches to close the wound. He's particularly grateful to A&E staff because they took extra care to make sure the stitches didn't ruin his wolf's tattoo. He's still wearing shorts to work. Sylvia was in such agony from an infected gallbladder that her family called 999. She spent five days in hospital. A few weeks later, she had another bad attack and this time had an operation to remove gallstones. She hopes to go on holiday once she recovers. Two-year-old Fateh, who was rushed to hospital showing signs of sepsis, was treated by paediatric doctors who worked to bring down his temperature. They discovered he didn't have sepsis, but that it was a throat infection which had caused his high fever, which led to him having a fit. Fate was given antibiotics and was back to normal after a few days. And Sydney, who'd gone to his GP because he'd lost feeling in one side of his body, had suffered a very minor stroke. But the good news is he's now regained movement on his right side. He continues to enjoy the time he spends with Miriam. They still call each other every morning. <laughs> <laughs>